September of 2010, I was diagnosed with colorectal cancer. Uh, I did both chemo and radiation, but I was diagnosed with radiation enteritis, which means that my bowel has been damaged by the radiation. A lot of the patients that come here are at a very low point in their lives. They uh, have survived their cancers. They thought they had it licked, and all of a sudden they're faced with the devastating long-term side effects of cancer, uh, particularly pain and tissue breakdown. And again, with diabetics, you know, they've been fighting diabetes for years, and now they've got these non-healing wounds. When I have the flare-ups, I always end up in the hospital because I can't um, eat anything. You get somebody a year out of treatment and their, their tissues have broken down, their, their teeth are falling out, they're bleeding from their bladder. They'll come to us, we force angiogenesis, which is a growth of new blood supply into the tissue damaged area, and then those tissues can heal. They were really hopeful that it would help. I knew it was going to be a very big commitment. It was 40 treatments, uh, but I was ready to take it on. So they go in the chamber each day and they're pressurized, the O2 hood is put on them, and they breathe oxygen under pressure for a total of 90 minutes. So the whole treatment lasts about two and a half hours. It's not an area of medicine that you tend to hear about. If they've heard anything about it at all, they'll say, oh, that's divers who get the bends. My background is Navy. I was in the Canadian Forces for 21 years as a diving and submarine medicine consultant. And I remember thinking, they didn't treat us, teach us this in medical school and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I had never heard of it and so I think this is really important to get the word out there and I think it's all about education and realize the hope uh, that it gives us patients. Very often patients will come here not only with their physical conditions but also mentally and emotionally. Uh, many are depressed and uh, have sort of reached the end of their rope. They go in there, they realize, hey, this isn't so bad. And when you've got really bad radiation damage, you'll do pretty well anything to get better. One of the first impacts that we're able to have on them with hyperbaric oxygen therapy is control of their pain. Because as soon as the new blood vessels start to grow and we can bring oxygen and blood to the, the tissue, the pain goes away. Mentally, it's been very positive. And of course, when I first started, I was scared to death and didn't know what to expect. I thought, oh boy, when they close that door, it's going to be really tough. Um, even the ones that are slightly claustrophobic, once they get in there, they realize it's not a big deal. So you're really just sitting there relaxing, and I've read six books. Sometimes we talk. We share a lot about your, your problems and your, your cancer and what you've each gone through. And they see other patients around them, often in worse shape than they are, getting better. They see that they can have a life again. You form a bond, I think, that will I'll always remember them. We're the only hyperbaric chamber in the Maritimes. Over 1.6 million people is our catchment area, which is challenging. We're a small area of medicine. We can have a large impact preventing amputations, preventing more surgeries, preventing more hospitalizations, if we can just get the chance to treat them. When we go through this life-threatening disease and we come out the other end, this gives us hope for more healing and I'll be able to move on and not have to live my life never knowing when I'm going to experience another bout in the hospital. Every bit of it's worth it.